So hello and welcome to another video, our first video on MotoGP19. Obviously we did the stream earlier on, if you didn't catch that, well you didn't really miss much, I was just on the floor most of the time and there was a lot of problems with the stream as well so I do need to apologise for that once again, but not a lot I could do. But we are here for the first episode of our career mode and this year I I will finish the career mode. If I stop uploading career mode you spam me with messages saying I have not uploaded career mode because I am finishing it this year. But we, we go into the career mode and you've greeted with this so you're allowed to do standard career. So instead of career you can set the riding aids and match options as you prefer, creating your own personal experience or pro career is challenged for real experts. Most options are set to the realistic level possible and you're not able to start timed sessions or races once started. Now for now I think I'll go for standard but I might I could swap to pro at some point, I mean it doesn't really matter. So we're going to standard here, so it's welcome to standard career mode. MotoGP 19 standard career mode, obviously we're challenged with freedom and competition. Set the race options and race uh, riding aids to suit your riding style as close as possible. Get ready to take on the best MotoGP riders and become a world champion. Well, it's trying to get me to join MotoGP straight away. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to go to Red Bull Rookies because that's sort of what you do. So debut category, start your rider career in Red Bull Rookies Cup. The single brand championship is reserved for young riders who want to break through in motorbike racing and it's proven to be a breeding ground for future champions. The calendar is shorter than other categories at seven stages or the European races where you have to make a difference. So we'll go on to that then. Welcome to the Red Bull Rookies Cup. All participants use the same bikes in this championship, so the only difference is rider skills. You have seven Grand Prix, and you have to try and earn a contract with Motor 3. Okay, so that's how you start the weekend then, is it? The calendar allows you to start next weekend and see which future races await you. You can also see previous race standings here. The leaderboards, so it's the championship then, is it? Yeah, right, career progress. So while participating in Rebel Rookies Cup, you can check your race statistics and career progress. Furthermore, you can access your customization. And then research and development, you can invest R&D points, test to increase your bike's performance by working on engine chassis, you improve performance while constraint on traction control, you improve bike's rideability. So yeah, you can set up it on MotoGP results and discover which riders made their mark on the last race weekend. So it's a little bit like the old news thing, that one. Uh, I do find that a bit odd that uh, Rossi won at Austin. I guess uh, yeah, he did nearly, he did nearly win it this year actually. To be fair. But there you go. So we start with 500 reputation then. So let's go through some of these. So you can just see the championship. Obviously, uh, well, not in these championships. So everyone's in there. Obviously, in our championship, they are. So Rossi's actually currently leading the MotoGP championships in this uh, career mode. Uh, Moto2. Luzzi's leading it by five points in front of Balasari. And then Yama is leading it by ten points in Moto3. So uh, yeah, that's my custom number you can see there. I'm not a massive fan of it myself, I'm not gonna lie. But I tried to make it as good as I can. It's not great, but I I'd prefer it if I could still pick my own font. I know I like the fact that there's customization because a lot of you guys wanted that. But I I would have preferred just to be able to pick a number as well, just pick one of the generic fonts. But we'll see. We'll head straight into this. So oh, well, you can see you can see all the weekends then. So I'll we'll see. It's all the seven races. as uh, the same as last year. So without further ado, we'll get into into, into it. Don't want to have all the uh, free practices on. I am just going to do qualifying and the race. Uh, did I pick how long it would be? I haven't got that far yet. Okay, cool. But so uh, yeah, I'll see you in the race. I'm not going to keep weirding on through the menus and that. So uh, I'll see you once we get out on track. Right. So we're here in the garage now, and yeah. I did I did realise that I could have set the difficulty and stuff and I have gone back and done that now so it is now on 120% AI, I can confirm that. There is movement. And it is a 25% race. So in fact I think I'll just do a flying lap actually, I don't want to do an out lap because I already did an out lap uh, and then I was like hang on, I never set the difficulty or anything. I think I might have said it beforehand but I definitely thought I'd go and have a look and well I did because it's on 80% and I would have won for sure. Right. Let's turn the anti wheelie down. We are on. We can turn the traction control off as well. I think. Let's run a rebel rookie's bike. You watch our high side out this first corner now. Said that. Now I'll just completely miss the apex instead. I'll be on my, on my game against these 120s. So. 
not pushovers like the previous ones. Although I found them hard at the time, so. That's it at Ponds. And put Danny Pedrosa corner. Obviously he's been a dry sack. I think it's not anymore. Close. Did nearly crash there. Getting on the throttle a little too early. But I must say I'm feeling really comfortable on this uh, this bike. I remember last year these were the bikes I couldn't even ride, but this is the one I've probably ridden the best the entire time I've played the game. So to the last corner, running a bit hot. Uh -huh, I've run in very hot. Good job we had lenient uh, rules on there, otherwise we'd have a lap took off us. What's the lap time going to be as we got towards the line? 54 0. I don't know if that's any good because I've not seen, not seen anybody else do a lap time yet. Right, so I returned to the pits now after doing that lap. I went for another one, but I got a bit held up and I actually made a mistake and nearly fell off. Uh, I lost the rear tyre, well, I lost the rear quite, uh, quite badly. So let's have a look at what the lap time is. So uh, no one else has actually done a lap yet, so. That's interesting. Uh, they haven't got my sectors though. I'd like to see my sector times. But I'll skip forward a couple of minutes and see where we are at that point. So with about five minutes left in the session then, we are actually still on pole by nearly nine tenths of a second, which uh, yeah, that surprised me as well. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Especially because, I mean, if you think back to the stream from earlier, how poor I was doing then, and then I've jumped on this bike and I said I felt comfortable. Oh, Tate, speaking of... Tate's has gone two seconds quicker than me! I'm sorry, what? what? Why has he gained two seconds from? Okay, so we're not on pole anymore then. Uh, I was about to say we'll probably end the session there, but... Um, yeah. Where's got? That's got to be a bug. There's no way he's two seconds quicker than everybody. I could see him, like, you know, beating me by two seconds. Like, I'm not disputing that, but... The discrepancies in the lap times here are unbelievable, but I'm looking at the sector times and he's genu genuinely two seconds quicker. If you look at these sector times, look, he's nearly like a second quicker than some of them through the first sector. Like, he's seven tenths quicker than the slowest guy here. So, yeah, that's pretty crazy, pretty crazy, gotta say. If you're looking down here, someone's done a 31, he said a 28 in that sector, so Carlos Tate, he's got some serious pace here. But uh, yeah, I think I will skip probably to the end of the session now and probably start the race then. The qualifying session has just ended and while the riders make their way back to their boxes, let's have a look at the final times that show us the front row for the start of tomorrow's Grand Prix. So thank you there, Keith. But uh, Carlos Tate, two seconds on pole ahead of me, look. Absolutely ridiculous. But then we had a pretty good margin and uh, nearly nine tenths back to Lorenzo Fallon in third place, Jason Dufa Squire in fourth and Barry Baltus in fifth. But without further ado, we'll head into the race weekend, well, into the actual race, and see how we, we fare in our debut race in River Rookies. We're now broadcasting from the starting grid where everything seems ready. It's always difficult to predict the results of a race like this, but the riders we're seeing right now definitely seem to be the favourites. So, yes, um, we did absolutely get destroyed by Carlos in that session there, but so did everybody else. Uh, my, my objective is to try and beat the guy. Uh, we've got to change the tyres, so though because for some reason they try and make you do the same tyres that you did in qualifying. It's like, I don't want to go on a tyre with 67% tyre where to start the race. But, uh, yeah, obviously there's uh, someone that seems to be interviewing us there. It's quite nice, got the little MotoGP19 logo on the microphone. But, as I say, without further ado, let's get straight to the race and see what we can do. Hopefully we can uh, win the race. Few moments to go until the start of the Spanish Grand Prix. These riders know it will be vitally important to take the first curve perfectly. It will be, it will be vitally important and the start as well. 
Um, Got to try and get off to a good start if we can. Okay, what, 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 what's going on? What, what are these starts from everybody? That's ridiculous. See how many got past me then. I'm trying to cut us way back through now, but damn, did you see that start? How did they get off to such a good start? Back up into eighth now. I guess it's actually on bolt as if we can, but look, the leader's bolting already. Oh, we've been dive bombed. Oh, we're going to go to the inside of Baltus. This could only go badly. Past Baltus and Felons in front. Well, Tate's bolting anyway, at the front. Contact with someone there. Fine, balance still. Oh, we got hooked on the outside curve a little bit there. Not good. The crush of Billy. Billy Van Erde has fell off. But oh, those those three in front are trying to go three wide through the see because the corners that can only go bad. Well, we got a good run. We got a good run. And breaks for the last corner. Better than our quality lap anyway. Do Pasquire in front, we've got to try and get some stream off him. I'm trying to tap the other two because Tate's gone already. Tate's at 56 8 compared to 59 4, so he's absolutely gone. Oh, we're being turned in on a little. We weren't really fully alongside him, but I was a little bit alongside him. But Cooney is battling with Salvador. have these two, that would be quite nice. So if I could start second, finish second, that would be fine. Especially after the start we had. I need to look into that, what happened, but what was that? Has anyone else had that? Because I, if you notice, I didn't really do anything wrong. I had the throttle like all the way down. This wasn't going anywhere. And it wasn't like it was spinning up either. Like I literally, you know, had no wheel spin. So that's just some sort of like, you know, start you know, secret start setting, I don't know, that likes in the game and you can't turn off, so then if you put to a throttle on it stops you, I don't know. Uh, but it's a bit weird. I let my clutch out in plenty of time. We've got these other Cooney now. Grasp our corner. Salvador is the next rider in my sights and Tate's not too far in front, but he's further in front than I'd like him to be. I think further in front than I'll be able to catch him. I do feel like I have pretty good pace, but I'm not going to... Oh, hang on. I put the inside curb. That could be quite bad. I'm surprised Cooney hasn't come through there. We cut the inside curb again. So... Yeah, not good. Have we got in hot, though? He's come back through. Well, we've got the better run. 51.7 there for Tate, 52.8 for me. So we all seem a bit quicker in the race. Obviously, Tate had a good qualifying, so well, a, a tremendous qualifying, so he can't really go much quicker, but I took a good 1.3 off of mine. There. And all those mistakes really allowed Salvador to get ahead of me, so I'm going to try and hunt him down. 1.6 seconds. 1.26, yeah, 2.16, so I have got 1.6 from So 6 is the last digit, so I must have said the wrong one. But we are on the penultimate lap, so we are running out of time to catch him. If we're going to, anyway. Not a massive fan of the hairpins at her to be honest. Ok, 
here in these cores again now. Perhaps we should use a lower gear for that corner, I'm not sure. Tan El Nieto. Yeah, we're now two seconds behind Salvador, we've just almost crashed on that curb. So I think he might have it. So I think we're going to end up finishing third, if we're lucky anyway. Because we are making a massive mistakes, we're clipping these inside curves. That's allowing Cooney really to capitalise. Oh, he's just crashing to the side of us, nice. But out of the last corner, I think I shifted a little early there, not great. This is going to be 52.7, so I think another personal best for me, but this is going a lot bit quicker. We've gone in very hot into turn one. Very, very hot indeed. And we are finally starting to make some inroads on on him in front, but it's a bit too late. Yeah, he's two point six in front. Now. He completely bolted. Like we literally squabbled for about a like a sector, or not even that. And he was gone. It's like when I passed Cooney, like all of a sudden Cooney was like a second behind. So it seems like you lose a lot of time by battling in this category at least. So we've got to just try and bring it home now. We're not gonna beat we're not gonna beat Salvador in front. We're definitely not gonna beat Tate, but I think we we can beat Cooney if we're just careful in this last sector. Obviously we're already in front of the guy. I mean, there's a big back, uh, gap back to fourth if we were to make a mistake. But obviously I want third, not fourth. So well, he's all over the back of us now. So we definitely got to watch him. He's eight ten. Oh, he's eight tenths behind. So oh, he went in hot. That's why because he closed right up. He went in hot. So it's fine then. Well, he, well, he must have done because he lost a lot of time all of a sudden. the last corner. I think I have gone in quite hot into here. Not too bad. About the last corner we go. It's going to be third place on our debut. Carlos Tate wins the Spanish Grand Prix. We had some pretty consistent lap times there. We're in the While high While Pope starts to fill up with the stars of the race, we're going to take a look at the final race ranking. So yeah, look at these gaps. They're absolutely humongous. I'm not really sure how how that happens, to be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit shocked. <laughs> I'm a bit shocked about the gaps because there's 2.3, you know, between the top two and another two seconds back and another bit of time. And then 23 seconds and go down to the bottom. 51 seconds away after, you know, four laps. Cements. Like uh, I think there might be some balancing needed, perhaps, for this. But it means Noral AI are here, and they have turned up today. They have shown what they are capable of. So, based on that, I don't think I'm going to be close to winning this championship. But you never know. You can be surprised. So obviously, the championship standards will be exactly the same as the. As the the race results, that's the word I was looking for, so just same, we are 9 points down on Salvador, so let's head back to the career hub and see if there's anything new for us. Third place is good for the team's morale, 16 points more in the ranking and the knowledge that the rider and bike are extremely competitive. Yeah, I kind of forgot about part firm, maybe we'd have to go here first, but yeah, see, obviously, pretty happy there, my rider, and I'm quite happy with that performance myself, especially considering what we were doing on the stream earlier. So I think that's some new reputation there, isn't it? Obviously, qualified second, finished third. Yeah, we've got the, the extra points for the bonus options as well. Thanks, we uh, did a full weekend. Well, we did you know, more, more events in the weekend. We've got some more as well. But I think that will pretty much wrap it up for the first episode here. Uh, obviously, Mar Marquez seems to have won in Le Mans, apparently. But uh, we are sitting currently third in the Rebel Rookie Championship. Obviously, we had a very good qualifying and pretty strong race. Obviously, we had this awful start, so I do need to definitely look into that. So 
hopefully something we can rectify for the future. I hope you've enjoyed that first episode. Uh, hopefully, you know, it was a pretty good race. I quite enjoyed it. Nor they are here, they have put their foot down. And hopefully the riding wasn't too bad in that video. Uh, it was definitely a lot better than the career mode from last year. If you remember that, I was uh, wallowing down in like 26th place, ramming into people. You know. I was all over the place. I could not adapt to that game. I seem to have adapted a little bit better to this, but I'm still not 100% comfortable yet. I'm sure we will be in time, but it's mainly the front end. So perhaps I'll make uh, some setup tweaks, see what we can do for the next episode. But enough rambling from me. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I shall see you in the next one.